The blind phantom looked around. He was in a dark forest with tall trees. He thought to himself, It's here. I can feel it. He began walking forward, deeper into the shadows. He stopped at the entrance of an old mine shaft. There stood a creature. It was tall and skinny. It had green, dragon-like scales and wore a long brown coat. The creature spoke. Took you long enough? What were you doing anyway, haunting a house? The phantom was unamused by his statement. He looked at the mine shaft and said, In there, James? Uh, yeah, James replied. The third one this month. The phantom made his way into the cave. As he did, James called back to him. Hope you wouldn't mind doing this one on your own. I, uh, I gotta be home soon. My mom, she, uh, she needs me to, uh... The phantom left earshot before he could finish. Oh, well, fine then. I didn't want to go. Those things creep me out anyway. The phantom began leisurely making his way through the mine. He stopped and stared. In front of him was a crack in nothing. A large tear floating above the ground. Something's different about this one. I can sense it. I've got no time to waste. The phantom reached inside the rip and began pulling it open. Once it was wide enough, he stepped inside. The other side was an infinite black and purple void. The phantom rose off his feet and began hovering. He flew forward while looking at the vast cosmos around him. He noticed a brown wooden door off in the distance. He moved closer to it and looked at the door's shiny golden handle. <laughs> he stared at his reflection. It looked like him, as a reflection should. But something felt off about it. Something sinister. The phantom reached forward and grasped the handle. He slowly turned it and pushed the door open. He stepped through the door and it slid into the ground and vanished. The phantom looked around. He was now in a large gray desert with a black sky. I can't believe it. I'm in an alternate timeline. However, being in this place reminded him of something, or someone from his past. Before the memory could finish forming, he quickly snapped himself out of it. I need to focus. Find out what made that rift. It was then he saw a humongous factory on the horizon. That looks like a good place to start. He reached forward and the world began distorting. The land stretched and warped. The factory moved closer to him. He put his hand down and everything returned to normal. The only difference was that he was now standing right next to the factory. He walked forward and stepped through the walls as if he were made of mist. As he passed through, he noticed the workers looked strange. Their skin was made of wool. Their eyes were sewn on buttons, and they had patches and stitch marks all over their bodies. Despite their less than organic appearances, they seemed to be suffering. Expressions of anguish and despair were painted all over their raggedy faces. What manner of place is this? The phantom stopped at a minefield outside the factory. There, many patchwork people threw pickaxes at the earth. None of them were able to see him. But there was one he felt a connection to. As he moved closer, the creature looked up. Wha uh, who, who are you? He said as he jumped back in a startled panic. None of the others seemed to care about his reaction. The phantom spoke. Don't worry. I'm not here to hurt you. The creature looked up and down, trying to figure out what he was looking at. Listen, I need your help. Can you explain to me what this place is? You're kidding, right? The creature said. The phantom stared at him. Wait, you really don't know where you are? Well then, allow me to explain. Argus, the greediest thing on the planet, built this here factory. But he was too dangerous for any cyclops to operate, so he used some formula to create an expendable workforce. Or that's what I heard anyway. Tell me, 
do you have a name? Oh, we aren't allowed to have names. Only numbers. We do have nicknames we call each other during downtime. And yours is... Sam. Suddenly, there was a loud shout. Hey! 984235! A large, one-eyed monster covered in rusty scraps shambled towards them. It shouted again. Get back to work, 984235! Oh, uh, yes, this is sorry, it won't happen again. Sam leaped up and grabbed his pickaxe and went back to work. You've answered my questions very calmly, Sam. Is there any reason for that? No one else can see you. I just assumed you were another figment of my imagination. Another? Sam's shadow began stretching. It peeled off the ground, then grew two big white eyes and teeth. He's talking about me, the shadow said in a malicious voice. It extended its arm forward as if offering to shake hands. Name's Rattuk. Nice to meet you, Mr. Phantom. Blind Phantom, the Phantom said while not shaking Rattuk's hand. Boy, this guy is real fun, Rattuk said. Actually, Sam said. I think I like him more. All he does is ask questions. You... Rattuk stretched his neck and shoved his face in front of Sam's, then said, I'm his hype man. I give him... support. He smiled sinisterly. Sam threw his axe down in anger. I thought you left me alone, he yelled at the imp. Rattuk laughed. You look like such a fool shouting at nothing. The whistle blew. It was time for the workers to go to sleep. They all walked with their heads low, dragging chains behind them. They stopped at a cliff. They crawled into burrows carved into its side. There were no rooms, pillows, or blankets. All they were given was cold stone to lay on. The phantom stood by Sam, then asked him, Exactly when did you and Rattuk meet? Sam replied, Please, just leave me alone. Rattuk jumped in. Ooh, I could tell you. Poor little Sammy was in a deep, deep depression. Till I came along and cheered him up. Sam lurched to the side. Fine, you want to know? I'll tell you. It all started one day when I was working. I accidentally hit myself with my own axe. I was lucky not to lose any limbs, but it hurt like hell. Aklo, that big, rusty fellow from earlier, saw I wasn't working and took it upon himself to punish me. It happened when I was still young. My spirit hadn't broken yet. That night, I cried, but no one seemed to notice. No one but Lilith. She recognized my pain. She wanted to help me instead of ignore me. Many years went by and we became the light in each other's lives. Every day was hard, yes, but knowing we would see each other in the end is what made it bearable. But it wasn't enough. Lilith wanted freedom. For months we worked on a plan to escape. The final day came, and we carried out our plan. We managed to get closer than anyone else had ever been. But only one of us could make it out alive. I would have died for her, but after I helped her escape, Argus found me. He told me Lilith was just using me, that she never cared about me. I didn't believe him at first. Why would I? I knew she would come back for me. So I waited. And waited. I counted the days, months, years. The day I lost count was the day I met Rattuk. Rattuk cut in. And I helped Sammy realize he never needed that old dame. Sam looked up and said, You know, Rattuk hadn't bothered me in a while. Till you showed up. Tell me, do you have any of Lilith's belongings? Sam turned over and shuffled for a bit. He held out a small piece of pink torn cloth. This was part of her dress. The phantom took the torn piece from Sam's hand. You can keep it. It means nothing to me. Now please... Let me get some sleep. If you wish, 
the phantom said while turning towards the moon. This erratic must have something to do with that rift. No. Demons like him are capable of traveling between worlds. But he can't. He appears to be some sort of hybrid. But how is it even possible? I should remember to keep an eye on him. But if he isn't involved with the rift, then who is? Ratuk slid in front of the phantom and said, Hey, listen, pal. I'm not imaginary, and you aren't either. If you're thinking about haunting him, I suggest you pick a new target. I'm not trying to haunt him. I'm trying to help him. Yeah, that's what they all say. The phantom stood in the middle of the desert. He lifted up his hand. In the center of his palm was a faint blue flame. He slowly waved his hand. The flame stretched and elongated. It formed into the shape of a canine. The flame slowly died, and beneath it was a glowing, specter-like wolf. Elysia, I summon you. The phantom held out the pink cloth. Find the one known as Lilith, please. Elysia grabbed the cloth with her mouth, then turned around and ran off into the desert. Not long after, she returned. She spat the cloth on the ground and whimpered. Nowhere. But that's... Impossible. Unless he turned and looked back at the factory. Of course. Sam, wake up, the phantom said. Uh, what? I have something to show you. Can it wait? I'm afraid not. Ratuk slid out from under a shadow. Don't trust him, Sammy. He'll betray you. Just like lit. the phantom lifted his hand, and a hurricane of white light shot through his palm. Ratuk was instantly torn to bits and incinerated. The phantom spoke. He'll regenerate soon. Quickly, grab my hand. Sam fidgeted nervously. Please, this could be your last chance for peace. Sam timidly reached forward and grabbed the phantom's hand. His soul left his body and he descended below the complex. At the very bottom, they found a huge steamy boiler room. The phantom looked at Sam and said, See anyone you recognize? Sam squinted his eyes and looked around. Then he noticed a familiar silhouette. No, it, it can't be. He flew forward to get a better look. Standing there in front of him, was Lilith. There were tear marks on her body that leaked cotton like blood. She weeped while pushing a large metal lever. She's still here, said Sam. That's not all, said the phantom. He placed his thumb on Sam's forehead. Instantly, he found himself inside a memory. Only, it wasn't his. It was Lilith's. When she escaped, she didn't leave him. At first, she hesitated out of fear, but then chose to go back for him. However, she was captured by Argus. He saw an opportunity to make one of his slaves just a little bit more miserable. The memory ended. Sam's button eyes were filling with tears. Then he said, No. I, I never knew. I'm sorry, Lilith. I'm sorry. He fell to his knees and began sobbing. The phantom tapped Sam on the head and he was instantly sent back to his body. He leaped up and said, You have to save her, please! The phantom replied, I cannot. Only you can. Me? But what am I supposed to do? Sam said. The phantom told him, Well, I can't do it for you, but I can give you a little push. He placed a finger on Sam's forehead and blue flames exploded around him. Sam's eyes glowed brighter than the sun. Then, all of it vanished as quickly as it appeared. Aklo took notice of Sam's lack of work. I'm tired of warning you, 984235! He slowly marched forward and said, Maybe another beating will teach you a lesson. He lifted up his club and prepared to smash it down on Sam. But as he did, 
Sam grabbed it midair. Aklo stumbled back in disbelief. How did- Sam grabbed Aklo's armor and peeled it off like shedding skin. He slammed him on the ground, knocking him unconscious. Sam stomped over to the mining field. He lifted up his arms and several tendrils made of blue flame sprung out from his body. The tendrils began following around the slaves, giving them the same energy Sam had. Join me, brothers and sisters. Today is the day we reclaim our freedom. Everyone cheered as they broke free of their chains. They began rampaging through the factory, freeing more slaves. The more they freed, the more hopeful they became. The more hopeful, the stronger. Sam and his army arrived at the entrance of the final door. Come on, we have to get this down. But then, out of nowhere, the door faded and became pitch black. Two large white eyes and dozens of tiny teeth appeared on it. People in the crowd began muttering things like, What is that? And what's going on? Sam confusingly looked around. Wait, all of you can see him too? The teeth on the wall moved. Of course they can, you idiot! Did you honestly think I was just a hallucination? Anyway... I can't let you get to your girlfriend. In fact, I can't let you shut down this factory either. But why? Why'd you always torture me with my emotions? Sam yelled. The phantom appeared next to the crowd. Because misery fuels his power. Yes, it's true. I could have drained anyone in this here factory. But you, Sam, something about your heartbreak, it tasted different but even with your new flavor it still wasn't enough to quench my thirst so somehow you created a rift in an attempt to escape and find more victims the rift it all makes sense now you came through it i should have realized this earlier the phantom levitated above the crowd and yelled I'll hold him off. All of you, get through that door! Ratuk shrank down and morphed back into his humanoid form. He shot himself forward and tackled the phantom. The two fell to the ground and wrestled with one another. The ragmen banged their axes and shovels against the wall until it toppled over. They rushed in and began destroying the equipment. Sam hectically searched for Lilith. He kept looking around, but he couldn't find her anywhere. Looking for someone, a brutal voice called from behind. Sam whirled around and saw a tall, red creature with six arms and one eye. Lilith was wrapped around its many limbs. Sam muttered to himself, Argus. Meanwhile, the phantom was still tangling with the shadow menace. Ratik attempted to stab him with his various tendrils. The phantom summoned more blue flames to combat his foe. But every time he burned off Ratik's limbs... New ones took their place. Eventually, he had grown too large. He became too overwhelming to fight. Ratik's tentacles wrapped around the phantom and slammed him against the ground. Sam demanded, Let her go! Argus laughed. Now, how about we make a deal? I'll let her live if you call off your army. Lilith shouted, No! Don't do it! You have to let me die! Argus choked her, then yelled, Quiet! He dropped her to the ground. She began coughing while rubbing her neck. Argus stepped on her head and began pressing his foot down. Wait! Sam screamed at the top of his lungs. I give up. You win. He got down on his knees and put his hands on his head. The Cyclops stepped forward and said, Good. He grabbed Sam and began pulling on his arms. The fabric on his body began to rip and tear, revealing Sam's cotton-filled insides. He screamed while Argus laughed. Then Sam opened his eyes and saw Lilith. Somehow, he knew what she was thinking. Come on, Sam. You can do it. Don't give up. You can win. This gave Sam the energy he needed to fight back. He broke free of Argus's hold, then slammed his fist directly into his one eye. Argus coughed out blood, then stumbled back a bit. He slammed against a railing and fell over a platform, and almost landed in a pit of boiling lava. He managed to grab onto the edge of a cliff. 
he called out. Help me! Someone! Please! Lilith walked over to the edge and looked down on him. She frowned, then slammed her foot on his hand. He instantly let go and slowly burned to death. Shortly after, Sam and Lilith had a more official reunion. Sam, I'm sorry I shouldn't have left you behind like that. I was just so scared. Sam replied, It's okay. I know the truth, and I'm glad it's all over. The pair embraced each other while whispering, I love you. The entire time Sam's confrontation was going on, Ratuk still had the phantom pinned down. But now that Sam and Lilith were together again, the demon grew weaker. No! No, what's, what's happening to me? Ratik said as he started shrinking. The phantom stood up and told him, You're running out of fear to drain. Ratik punched the ground and muttered, And I was so close to escaping this world. The phantom grabbed him by the neck and lifted him up. How were you capable of creating that rift? He demanded. I didn't. I swear, I, I only found it one day. I wanted to drain Sam one last time before leaving. Sam and Lilith walked over and saw Ratuk in his pathetic state. Sam smiled and said, All's well that ends well. The phantom frowned. No, he didn't create the rift, which means someone else did. Then he realized that soon the rift would close and disappear. The phantom turned to the ragman and said, I'm afraid I have to leave you now. Sam's smile faded. So soon? The phantom nodded. Lilith looked at Ratuk and said, What about him? The phantom pondered for a moment, then proclaimed, He doesn't belong here. He belongs with his own kin. He reached into one of his pockets and pulled out a bronze stopwatch. He held it towards Ratuk, then a miniature tornado funneled out and tore Ratuk to pieces. All his remains were sucked into the center of the watch. The phantom gave one last goodbye to his new friends then returned to his own world. Once he had arrived back on Earth, he opened the stopwatch. Inside was Retuk's face, compressed and angry. Why couldn't you just throw me into the abyss? He asked. Because that's what you want. And I could use the company. Retuk scoffed and said, You know I can't be trusted, right? I'll betray you. I'll kill you. The phantom looked at Ratuk right in the eye and said, I know. Ratuk had no idea what to say in response, so he stayed quiet. A small creature covered in green warts crawled over mountains of skulls and eventually arrived at a large black castle with a purple sky behind it. The creature scurried to the castle's entrance. He said to the armored guards, I must see King Krotek! I have an important message for him. The guards moved over and let him pass. He scampered through the halls, leaving footprints everywhere. He stopped at the throne room. He knelt down and said, Sire, I have news. There's another successful test with the rift spell. A large shadow rose off its throne and said, Good. Revenge is now within my reach. The goblin intercepted. Well, there's a bit of a problem, sir, Krotek yelled at him. What? The goblin curled into a ball. He told Krotek, it works, but it decays almost instantly. It's still unstable. Krotek grabbed the messenger and said, then fix it. Then he threw the creature out a glass window and sat back down on his throne. He muttered to himself, I swear. I won't stop till the man who wronged me is left a phantom.